السورة بتاعة ال... السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جود مورنينج جود افترنون جود ايفنينج وير ايفر يو ار ان شاء الله اند ويش يو هابي داي تو داي تو داي ان ذا عرب وورلد از ماذرز داي ا ويك اجو واز ذا ماذرز داي ان ذا ويست سو وي هاف تو سليبريت اور ماذرز داي افري داي نوت اونلي اون ذا 25th اوف مارش اور 17 اور 14 اوف مارش از وي دو Because my, our mother and father or our parents are the most valuable uh, individuals in our life. Today we are talking about Oxfam. Oxfam. A lot of people know Oxfam in the West. Yesterday we talked about it in Arabic language to understand what has happened to a unique uh, legendary organization such as Oxfam. Few weeks ago, the media came out with a scandal affecting Oxfam as an institution. Let me start by saying I'm not here to be pious towards anybody or any organization. I am with the law. I am with the regulator. I am with the way that we should be bringing those uh, individuals who have been doing faults at any organization, at any level, to justice. None of us is above the law, and none of us should break the law. So we should respect this, whether it's Oxfam or any other organization. What I'm saying, a few weeks back, we wake up and found a national campaign from right-wing and left-wing media to talk about a sex scandal affecting or done by individuals working in Oxfam office in Haiti. This happened 2010-2011. What astonishing me as an individual is that Oxfam has submitted a report to the regulator in 2011. Whether this is to say that we, are, we, we, we found something faulty on those people and in a, in, a, in a transparent way, they informed the regulator. What surprised me that this report, which nowadays everybody is talking about, it was not complete. There was some loophole in it. Everybody discovered this. In 2018, on the day, on the same day, where the government was discussing in the House of Commons the issue of the 0.7 percent budget of deficit to support the international humanitarian response and development response outside, this is a coincidence. No, no, no. Uh, uh, conspiracy theory at the back of my mind. But it's a surprise. Okay? But let us to start with putting a few questions on the table before we talk about Oxfam to the people who don't know Oxfam. Is this campaign which happened on my at, uh, uh, as much as I understand it looks like a national campaign was to diminish and reduce the civil liberty of the civil society organization, particularly the international humanitarian organization who work overseas? This is the question. And this is to curb down the advocacy program of Oxfam, which was one of the main pillars of such an organization since it was started 76 years ago. Is it coinciding the exit strategy of the Brexit of the government? Are our media, uh, we know that media in the East is politicized, but are our media in the West politicized as well? 
it's the fourth or the fifth question. So Brexit, media, and uh, uh, reducing the civil liberty space, as well as this, having this media campaign on the same day of discussing the uh, budget for the international development. These are just some questions. But why the regulator wait for six or seven years to discover that Oxfam report is not complete? These are questions you people need to uh, find an answer for it. Oxfam, why? For me, Oxfam saves the children, CAFOD, uh, British Red Cross, Christian Aid, World Vision UK, Care International UK, Plan UK are not less than the big men, are the landmark of the British society and the global society. On the humanitarian ground, we have to admit the value of the contribution of such organizations to humanity. We have to tell any community, any government, whether actually European or outside Europe, to have the, to, to recognize the achievement of such organization. This is my view as a humanitarian worker. We should not allow a mistake of a few to destroy an institution. This is the challenge. Challenge for any government, challenge for the media, challenge for the donors. Don't let anybody, I could be a thief as an individual, or somebody has been accused of sexually abuse somebody else, but because I'm a bad apple, that does not mean my organization is bad. Treat me separately according to the law of the country, but maintain the organization, maintain the institution and support them. Because their contribution to humanity was more than contribution of other individuals or other uh, governments who came to uh, the leadership for a short term. Well, who is Oxfam? For the people who do not know Oxfam particularly, if they are not if they are in the West or actually in the East. Oxfam is founded in 1942 and its original name called Oxford Committee for Famine and Relief and it became uh, an international organization in 1960. In 1965, it was called Oxfam GB, which is Fam Great Britain. In 1995, Oxfam had its international uh, co coalition organization, which called Oxfam International. Oxfam is one of the largest, the, the largest humanitarian organization that got a network of charity shops. The charity shops of Oxfam started opening the first one in 1948. Now Oxfam has more than 1,200 charity shops globally. 750 of, we, of, of, of them are in UK. 100 of these 750 are specializing in selling second-hand books and music in different cities, okay? Oxfam also is the largest retailer of second-hand books in Europe. Sales from these shops is to uh, this uh, uh, second-hand bookshops about 12 million pounds and from the charge shops as a whole 17 million pounds. They have 20,000 volunteers uh, and 500,000 donors in UK. Okay, so all these 750 shops in UK based on voluntary contribution of senior citizen or young male and female from different backgrounds. These are some of the child shops which I hope that each and every organization have the same like Oxfam to give a service, a social service to the underprivileged who are living in the West or in the East.
mission and value of Oxfam, it is one of the organization talks about right-based approach. Rights for what? Rights for sustainable livelihoods. To whom? To poor people, to refugees, and to displaced. To poor people, live, uh, 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 displaced, and refugees. To provide social services, basic social services to everyone. Water, sanitation, health, education, uh, literacy, uh, empowerment, all these kind of basic housing, all these kind of basic services. To protect life of individual and protect the security of the, the security of the individual. Okay, if we are a Muslim, we know that the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, talking about an individual. If he uh, who is a very lucky and prosperous individual on earth is such a one who has a dwelling to live in, healthy, live in safety, and have the food ration for the day. That means health, housing, uh, and job creation, and safety, as Oxfam was talking about. And this is not only done by Oxfam, but by all the charitable organizations, the humanitarian organizations, and development organizations working either locally or internationally. Right of the people to be heard by anybody and by everybody. Rights of the people to be heard by anybody and everybody. The, the last one is right of anyone to have an identity, especially for the displaced and refugees as a whole. These are some of the values of such an organization which started in 1942. Program of Oxfam has three parts, development work. The main is the main aim of the development work of Oxfam is to lift the community out of poverty with long-term sustainable solution. Most of the organizations claim the same. The organizations that I mentioned at the very beginning and others. It's a humanitarian program to work in conflict area and disaster-stricken area. They are pioneer in water and sanitation program. But the pioneering of Oxfam come in the last one, which is lobbying, advocacy, popular campaigns. And this is sometimes upset. Businessmen, upset. International companies, upset. Politicians, and upset the people who are corrupt. Okay? So they have trying to affect the policy decisions on causes of Conflict at local, national, and international levels. Whether they are on the local, national, and international le levels. Some of the campaigns they were doing successfully were first one, which is fair trade. Make trade fair when rich countries subsidize their commodities, their product, especially rice, cotton corn and sugar and send it to other countries to destroy their economy. It's fair trade or uh, make trade fair. Second one, the tariff, which is put on the goods, high taxes, especially if third world countries in Africa would like to import their product to other countries. They'll be shocked by the taxes or the tariff on their product coming there, not to make it compatible in the market. Okay? Labor rights for women, for women who earn lower wages than men, stringent patent issues, especially the very expensive medicine, which people cannot afford to buy it in third world countries, or a software for the computer and the others, or textbooks. And they can give the example of the textbooks. When I was a medical student, recently came to UK here, or even in Egypt when I was studying. It was very difficult for us to buy British printed medical textbook. Because at that time in the 70s and 60s and early 80s, least 
20 pound, 30 pound, 40 pound, 50 pound, 60 pound plus. We used to buy these books printed in India for 5 pound or 10 pound sterling. So this kind of expensive, because of the patency and the publisher cost, actually they were fighting for it. More campaigns. The first one is they changed government rhetorics to uh, make uh, the businessmen be transparent when they pay the tax. Transparency on the businessmen when paying the tax. Climate change campaign. After decades of campaigning with the UN, Climate Change Summit came 2015. Coal power. Now, uh, thank God that the British government uh, in November 2015 decided to phase it out, the co to phase out the, co the coal population in 2006. Even it up campaign in November 2017 to support UN for sustainable development goals to reduce inequality. Changing the law for better guaranteeing for better guaranteeing the UK government to pay the 0.7% national income to the uh, life-saving aid, which I mentioned it earlier on. Uh, tackling corporate dodging, corporate and dodging taxes would make tax fair, 2015. Pushed Pepsi, how they do business, 2014 through PepsiCo. Uh, stood at Act with Syria. Pushed politicians to make commitment again on the 0.7% for poor countries, Arms Trade Treaty was a part of the campaigners for April 2013. Uh, gender inequality, especially in the cocoa uh, farming, uh, it is uh, 2013. This uh, uh, talking to Mars, Nestle, and Mondelez for better treatment for farmer who are actually uh, doing that and respecting the women's rights as well. Drop Haiti debts 2010. Uh, with the World Bank, uh, made HIV treatment affordable, 2009, demand fair price for Starbucks, pay Ethiopian uh, farmers fair prices for their coffee beans, access to medicine for millions, and uh, uh, make poverty history, which uh, even were a part of it in 2005 onwards. This is what they have been doing, an extra to the real humanitarian response which everybody else can do. Is Oxfam is the only one who has bad apple in it? Most of organizations on earth, whether they are private business, whether they are regulatory bodies, whether they are government organization, whether they are educational organization, whether our uh, religious institution, social organization, have some sort of corruption and have some sort of abuse. But what we are trying to say is that let us tighten the law. Let us treat the criminals or the bad apples and isolating them from the sector, but not to destroy the sector but not to destroy the institution. Let us be fair. Fair. Because I remember in 2012, after the uh, conflict, armed conflict happened in Syria in 2011, we wrote to the regulatory body in the UK a letter about the mushrooming of kitchen table organi Syrian organization in the UK. And we were afraid of the many caravans going and crossing the border from Turkey to or from uh, other countries to Syria. And we said to the regulatory uh, body or the regulator, please let us do something about it because those people don't have any capacity as well as those organizations do not know how to work in the conflict zones. The answer came at that time is look at our website. Later on, Syria became the land of terrorism organization here became the terrorist organization, the, 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 the radical organization, and who started to uh, uh, paint the sector with this kind of difficulty, which affected and impacted the money transferred to Syria later on, and the de-risking which are suffering from it up till now. Regulator 
has to respond to an issue which the practitioners are raising swiftly, especially in a conflict zone, whether it's Haiti, Chad, Niger, Mali, Afghanistan, South Sudan, Syria, Yemen, Libya, and etc., etc. Congo, say, call it. Okay? If we look at United Nations, do we criticize United Nations? What we want, we need United Nations to be a strong, fair, powerful organization. But inside a growing uh, uh, organization such, an orga uh, such as uh, the United Nations, there is something happened in the past. And it's still happening because of bureaucracy, because of bad apples inside the organization. If we look at the financial corruption during the oil for food in the 90s for Iraq, they bought overpriced food material for items. There was a corruption in the Iraqi government at the time, making a cut, and some senior individual of the UN team making a cut, and the middleman company making a cut, and what have been reaching the Iraqi uh, 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 people at that time, uh, less than 35% of the budget being made for the Iraqi people. Because the Iraqi government taking some share, companies taking some share, businesses taking some share, and actually even inflating the prices, as well as even... Even they discovered that some bad or out of stock, out of date items have been sent to the people. How much Iraqi people suffered at that time? Less than, uh, around 1.5 million people died. Nearly half of them were children. If we talk about the moral corruption, sexual abuse, prostitution and trafficking, let us talk about Congo. Congo is, is, an, is, is, is a country in conflict for years. 2005, they discovered that there's actually a prostitution ring amongst the community led or being actually by UN personnel. 2005. They found 500 girls uh, amongst which people were underage. Okay? Prostitution and trafficking in Bosnia. The decision has been made to create and establish the police forces inside Bosnia. A company was appointed to do that and it was under the UN. Such a company, one of the leaders of this company, a woman called Katri, Katrin Porkovac, Porkovac, they reported to her that they found discos in Tuzla and young girls coming from where? From Slovenia, from Romania, and from Ukraine. And they're being used as prostitute. Who was involved in this? The local police, the local Bosnian police, as well as some of the senior uh, workers or managers of UN, whether actually uh, peace forces or uh, some senior individual. That's the biggest scandal. But the head of the UN mission at that time has been uh, 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 sent to Liberia uh, later on and something happened again. And if you look at the reports of this, uh, which came out uh, publicly, uh, uh, it is between prostitution and trafficking. This happened in Mali, in Liberia and others. UN forces war, peace, war, peace in, in Rwanda, bureaucracy. The head of the UN forces or the head of the UN mission sent is the reports to the headquarters talking about a conflict or a massacre 
might happen. Before the president was, uh, his, his plane was blown up. Nobody responded back. Is it because it's Rwanda? It's not Kuwait, which have got oil. It's not other places who have got gas. Nobody did anything. And Rwanda lost in the conflict more than 800,000 people in 1994. Srebrenica and Bosnia as well. The UN peace forces what left Srebrenica without protecting the displaced people in Srebrenica. More than 8,000 young men found shot dead and this was a massacre of Srebrenica. The last one which talk about which nobody can change it is the veto which is stopping many many resolution done by United Nations over the last 56 years and this will lead to a lack of trust to the institution. When you look at this as I mentioned earlier on as I mentioned earlier on I keep mentioning it it happened do we need UN? Yes, we do. Do we need Oxfam? Yes, we do. Do we need Save the Children? Yes, we do. Do we need Career International? Yes, we do. Do we need all these organizations? Yes, we do. But we need to regulate and to be fair and not to be politicizing our decision based on the interest of the few. One of the recommendations of Kofi Annan before he left said that we need to reform the United Nations. One of the recommendations of the World Humanitarian Summit last two, two years ago in Turkey is reform United Nations. We not only talk about United Nations, we talk about United Nations, we talk about reform in the Organization of Islamic Conference, we need reform in the League of Arab States, we need reform in all the regional and the global institutions. When I said in the Oil for Food program, some of the relatives of the Secretary General with S were involved in such corruption. In such corruption. Okay? But we need reform. And we need the institution. And we need the confidence to be put in the sector back. If there's any politician or any MP or any lord become a bad apple, does that mean that the political party is bad? Or the government is bad? If any prince or princesses or queen or king was a bad apple. Does that mean the whole, everybody is bad? And here we need to talk about fair media, fair treatment of these institutions which are providing services to hundreds of millions of poor people at a time when there's more conflict more natural disasters, less facilities, and less funding. Let us be fair. Yes, Oxfam workers did something awful, but we need to isolate the bad apples and to protect the sector and protect the institution. So my advice to myself and everybody else is whenever you receive a report as a regulator deal with it swiftly and investigate it into the details and make your forensic auditing to any organization for the people who do not understand what forensic forensic auditing mean forensic auditing is done by the government to any organization whom they would like to know the end user of their fund. Because most, if not all, of the fund given to any humanitarian organization is from the taxpayer of such country. And government has the right to understand how every penny in the pound been spent and how every penny in the pound reached the beneficiaries reaches the poor people and how every penny in the, uh, penny in the pound okay, utilized effectively to empower the local vulnerable
poor, marginalized, displaced community. Yes, they have right. Definitely they have right. But let us exercise our rights right. Let us protect the culture of civil liberty, our civil liberty, the culture and the freedom and the strength to strengthen our global humanitarian organization, which they are, as I said here, look at this, everybody come to London to visit this Big Ben and to see London Eye. But everybody also has to come to London to see Oxfam, Save the Children, Precious Red Cross, CAFOD, uh, Christian Aid, Care International UK, World Vision UK, Tear Fund UK, and all these great institutions which have been serving humanity for decades. And I might appeal at the end of the day to the donors, don't lose confidence in an institution which you build in institutions which you build and protected decades and decades ago. Separate the bad apples. Ask the government to exercise the rights. Ask the regulator to exercise the rights, but do not destroy the sector and the institutions. God bless you all. And I will donate for this organization, which I mentioned the name. And I encourage you not to stop donating because stop donating and trusting means that we are putting the lives of millions and millions and millions and millions of vulnerable people at risk. Thank you. God bless you. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you next week, inshallah, in a different topic in Arabic and English.